The following is a presentation of New Era Productions. Hello and welcome to Cricket Corner USA the newest program to join the New Era television lineup and the number one cricket show in the USA. I'm Melanie Burke and we are coming to you on location from the brand new $70 million Central Broad Regional Park. The park was officially opened on Friday, November 9th and several local dignitaries and international cricket officials attended that opening in Lauder Hill, one of the most ethnically diverse cities in South Florida. Today and next week, the first two episodes in the series, we focus on the opening of this new stadium and the economic benefits it is expected to bring to South Florida. What used to be nothing but a vacant lot has now been transformed into a 110-acre multi-purpose stadium that can seat up to 25,000 spectators. The site is located at the intersection of State Road 7 and Sunrise Boulevard, and it is an amazing campus of picnic shelters, pavilions, and playgrounds. But the reason we're here today is because of this stadium, which has been designed as the first international cricket venue in North America. So sit back and relax as we invite you to join us at the new Central Broward Regional Park, the facility that will bring the second most watched sport in the world right here in South Florida. In just a minute, we will be meeting the movers and the shakers. I'm speaking about none other than the people who made it all possible. Hi, I'm Shahid Berry. I have been in financial services business since 1983. My expertise are life insurance, health insurance, mutual funds, various investment programs, retirement plans, college education 529 plans, state planning, disability income insurance, and all type of annuities. My promise to you, my integrity, my honesty, best products, and best service. Call me for free consultation at 954-970-4558. Thank you. Welcome back to Cricket Corner USA. I'm your host, Melanie Burke. Now, if your question is about cricket, Bobby Rafi is your man. He loves to play it and he loves to watch it. We're going to find out more from Bobby, not only about this show and what you can expect to see here on Cricket Corner USA over the coming weeks, but we'll also find out about the connection between Cricket Corner USA and the spanking new facility in Lauder Hill. As a cricket lover, Bobby is very excited about the new stadium. I always used to tell everybody in the ICC that U.S., although it's the greatest nation in the world, we are still homeless. Homeless means we never had a cricket ground. So if you don't have a cricket ground, if you don't have a house, you are homeless. So I'm glad and I'm thankful to the city of Lauderdale and uh, you know, Broward County to build this beautiful facility out here. So now we can really go and get the players out here. And when I went to the different cricket boards, the India board, Pakistani board, they all give us the blessing when they saw we, we finally got a proper cricket ground so it was very easy for me to get the players uh, to come out here and play and promote cricket in the US. And I played for Pakistan at 19 at that time um, I had players like uh, Shoaib Muhammad, Wazim Akram, Salim Yusuf, uh, Salim Malik, Anil Dalpat, all these test players they used to play with me they were my teammates at one time and uh, I moved to US when I was very young I moved to California and um, I played for U.S. and then I managed U.S. So, you know, I always uh, talk, uh, think about my glory days in Pakistan was when I played there under 19. And most importantly, I was blessed that I traveled with the with the best ever team in, in, in the world, the West Indies cricket team from 1979 to 87. I used to go with them on most most of their tours and I used to be like a part of the team. So I, when, I, when, when it's come, people ask me what is my glory days, I always say with the West Indies cricket team. 
Now, you played with Pakistan and you toured with the West Indies. Did you ever meet the fury of the West Indies bowlers? Tell us about that. Um, yes, I, in fact, I, I got the honor to play Malcolm Marsh, Malcolm Marshall in, in the Nets only because, you know, uh, when I traveled with the West Indies team, there was one, you know, uh, during that time, Michael Holding, Sylvester Clark, uh, Colin Croft, Joel Garner, they were, they were, they were play, they were bowlers which I don't think anybody wanted to play them in their nightmares also, you know. If, if anybody asked me who was the best bowler ever, who graced this cricketing thing, I will say Malcolm Marshall's name. I think you guys are doing a great job. Cricket Corner USA, I, I, you know, as, you, as your thing stands, that number one cricket show in the US, no doubt you guys are number one. And you know, there's some things I wanted to see in the show, and I think not me, there's a lot of, a lot of people in the America want to see, is the legends, the people who, who made this game, who, the people like Gary Sobers, people like Malcolm Marshall, people like Viv Richards, but, you know, people like Javed Miandad, Imran Khan, and I definitely want to see it because I'm going to be tuning in every week to watch you guys. And I still, I again want to congratulate you guys on a very well show you guys put up together in a very short time. And hopefully you guys are going to grow bigger and bigger from here. After the break, meet some of the people who played major roles in bringing this project into being. Hi, I'm Shahid Barry. I have been in financial services business since 1983. My expertise are life insurance, health insurance, mutual funds, various investment programs, retirement plans, college education 529 plans, state planning, disability income insurance, and all type of annuities. My promise to you, my integrity, my honesty, best products, and best service. Call me for free consultation at 954-970-4558. Thank you. You're watching Cricket Corner USA. I'm Melanie Burke, and we are on location at Broward's newest sport facility, the Central Broward Regional Park. As I told you before, we're here mainly because of this multi-purpose stadium that is expected to bring cricket and thousands of cricket fans to South Florida. It was officially opened on Friday, November 9th, and Cricket Corner USA had an opportunity to speak with some of the people involved in the project. Businessman Muhammad Qureshi has lived here in America for several years, but he was born in one of the great cricket playing nations, Pakistan. He's quick to tell you how much he loves the sport, but he certainly put his money where his mouth is when he poured over $1 million into this stadium. So it's no understatement to say that he's one of the key players in the project. He is also one of the main people involved in bringing this program, Cricket Corner USA, to the small screen. I love cricket. I've been playing back home in Pakistan, and I was playing in the college and schools and migrated here. When I saw this big opportunity in the U.S., they can promote the cricket. So I was day by day I have a lot of county commissioners, mayors and talking to them why not just have the cricket fields and give us the cricket field we can play the uh, cricket tournaments here and promote the cricket. Most majority mayors and commissioners they have no clue what is the cricket is. That's the hard part of the uh, US. The, nobody knows the crickets, all they know about soccer and baseballs and footballs. But cricket is like unique games for them. They say, what is the cricket? I say, oh, they're playing in British. Actually, when I told them of this surprise, I said, you know what? Cricket is the second world largest game. Mohammed, now you're from Pakistan. And um, Pakistan is known, you know, for cricket. But they didn't do too well in the World Cup. Tell me what happened. Well, Pakistan have the good teams, but what happened? There was the junior team. There was uh, they lost the game from them, and they didn't get qualified for World Cup uh, qualifying round. Basically, Pakistan kicked them out early rounds. But our goal is a U.S. team we are trying to promote. I left the country long time ago. Now I'm here to help the cricket to bring in the U.S. So what I did, the county and effort for all these things. So we have the teams they can play 
to any world, any country in the world. We can play with Australia, New Zealand, Jamaica, West Indies, we call, and England. So basically, our main goal is the cricket stadium we built. We're gonna bring the best team for US. They will be play for national tournaments the worldwide. Central Broad Regional Park was a five-year project with several key investors, but it was funded largely by the county. Mayor Yosefus Eglishan was responsible for approving funds for the facility. Cricket Corner USA also caught up with him at the opening to find out more about his involvement and his vision for the park. Well, this park is a result of a $400 million park bond issue that was passed by the voters of Broward County in 2000. Um, when I saw this property in 2001, it was really uh, an antenna farm for uh, MCI WorldCom. And in my mind, it was a great place for us to put in this community what it had never had before, and that is a regional park. Of the $400 million that I talked about earlier, $200 million of that was set aside for parks. Another $200 million was set aside for conservation and open spaces. This facility that you see here today, this regional park, represents $70 million of the $200 million set aside for parks. Uh, we have built this as a crown jewel in our uh, county regional park system, and every dime that you see spent here today is county's money, and this is uh, the primary work of our Parks Division uh, and the Board of County Commissioners. Know that you're busy with county affairs. Tell me, when are we going to be able to see you out there on the pitch getting ready to hold that bat? Well, you'll see me out there probably sometime after the first of the year. Uh, our pitch, as you well know, this is a soft opening of our regional park. Uh, the pitch will not be completed until sometime in December. It's going to take a time for the grass and that pitch to grow up to a point where where it's uh, conducent to play uh, competitive cricket. So I would imagine sometime around the end of January that the pitch will be ready for competitive play. Uh, but as you can see, this is a beautiful facility, the only of its kind anywhere in the United States of America. And I've traveled to many cricket facilities throughout the world, and I would have to say this is one of the finest facilities anywhere in the world. Cricket is known as the gentleman's sport but it certainly isn't America's sport. After the break, find out about the plans being laid out to help the sport take off here in America. If it's cricket news you are looking for, we've got the scoop right here on Cricket Corner USA. So be sure to tune in every Saturday morning from 9.30 till 10 a.m. for all of the cricketing news, tips on how you can improve your game, and best of all, interviews with the legends, some of the greatest men to take to cricket pitches around the world. Watch us on Comcast Cable on Channel 19 in North Bade, Channel 79 in South Broward, and Channel 76 in North Broward. Don't you miss it, because I'm sure you will be bowled over. Welcome back to Cricket Corner USA. On today's show, we've been meeting some of the people who were involved in bringing this top-notch facility right here to South Florida. It took some $70 million to build this park, but investors are expecting significant returns. Now, I'm sure many people must be thinking, Cricket, will that take off here in America? Well, organizers and investors involved in this project certainly planned ahead and what they did was seek advice and assistance from some of the masters of the sport. For decades, the West Indies cricket team has dominated on the cricket world stage, and there is no denying that West Indians certainly are passionate about their cricket. About midway down the island chain, off to the east, is an island that is said to be home to the greatest cricketer the world has ever seen. The island is Barbados, and the cricketer is the right excellent Sir Garfield Soberbs. Other renowned players from Barbados include the three W's, Sir Everton Weeks, Sir Clyde Walcott, and Sir Frank Worrell. There was also Joel Gardner, known as Big Bird because he towered over his teammates at an imposing 6 feet 8 inches tall. And the late Malcolm Marshall, known for his deadly fast bowling skills. In fact, so dominant and successful was the West Indies reign during the 60s, 
70s and 80s that these men are all listed among an elite group of cricketers known as the legends. And guess what? Barbados, the birthplace of many of the legends, was the first island in the West Indies to join forces with Florida to help promote the sport here. Jeff Broom sits on the board of the Barbados Cricket Association. Jeff, you are a board member of the BCA, and um, I see you here this evening here in South Florida for this opening. Tell me something. I won't tell a soul. What are you doing here? <laughs> well, the Barbados Cricket Association has developed a very nice relationship with the city of Lauder Hill. As indeed, about five years ago, we brought a cricket team here involving Gordon Greenwich and Desmond Haynes um, and all, all these top cricketers here to, to South Florida. Since then, the mayor and some of his workers came to Barbados to actually um, view a test match as our, our special guest. Now obviously cricket is something that's very near and dear to us. As you are aware, we hosted the final of the last World Cup in Barbados. And I, anybody who has taken the time to study these statistics will suggest that, that match was watched by about a billion people. Um, it's, it was extremely popular. It, has, it really energized all of Barbados. It, obviously the stadium was extremely full. But more than that, more than that, I think the World Cup being hosted in Barbados really has significant spin-off. I think the, the, the business community benefited, the hotels benefited, um, the young people were totally energized and it really gave us some working material within the schools. As I said, I, I am involved in school, my principal at home, and we, we developed lots of different projects about cricket and about cricketers and about the relationship between the country's economy and the sport at many different levels. I think this is also significant. It can happen here in South Florida. Um, in terms of our stadium, I think you have a wonderful facility here. Um, I think you, you have 5,000 permanent stands, permanent seats for a really non-test cricketing country. This is significant. We in Barbados, people in, the, in our stadium, we own only had 10,000 permanent seats. But, you know, we, we expanded it to about 30,000, which I see there's ample room for the expansion to take place here with temporary seating for any significant event. So I, w I really want to commend all of those who would have had any hand in putting this facility together. What you have here that we did not have at Kensington is these wonderful lights. And if you had the lights at Kensington, the little hiccup we had in the game, the final would never have taken place. So I think you, uh, you here in South Florida have done a fantastic job in preparing for whatever can come. And I can tell you, things will come. Sounds to me that you're getting a little controversial here, Jeff. Are you saying that if you had the lights that Australia might not have won the World Cup? Is that what you're saying? Despite the fact that people tend to put controversial as my middle name, I would, I'm not necessarily saying that. I think we all recognize the fact that the, the, the little darkness that invaded Kensington created a little stir. But I think it was pretty much on the cards that Australia would have won. Indeed, it was, and it still is, probably the best um, cricket team in the world right now. And, um, but Sri Lanka played well. But I, I think the, the darkness um, that invaded sh highlighted a little f feeling on our part in Barbados where we did not put in lights at the very beginning like you've done here. I think you've got it right and the, the lights, I see you got eight pillions around here and, and the light looks up, it looks like quarter after two in the afternoon right now. Okay Jeff, now I hear that Barbados is home to one of the greatest cricketers the world has ever seen. Tell me a little bit about that. I think, I think somebody has not been speaking to you as accurately as they should have been speaking to you. Barbados is the home of some of the greatest cricketers but it is also the home of the greatest cricketers